Hello, I'm Holly and today I'm going to be talking about studying A326, the Empire module at The Open University. So for those who don't know, I study at The Open University, which is a distance learning university. That basically means that you do it all online. This year I studied a module called A326, which is the Empire module. It's a level 3 history module, which basically means it's like the highest level of module that you can do. I'm doing an open degree Degree, which means that I can pick modules from pretty much anything, but I've definitely gone down the history path. I have actually done a whole video about studying with the Open University, so I'll leave a link to that in the description if you're interested. I know that this is quite a niche video, it's not really book related, but I still wanted to talk about it. I loved watching these kind of videos when I was deciding whether to go to the Open University because I don't think there's that much out there that really talks about, you know, pros and cons of these kind of things, and I wanted to talk about it. So like I said, A326 is a history module. It is a level three module and it is 60 credits. To get a degree, I believe that you have to get 360. So it's about a sixth of that. I would recommend that if you are pursuing history that you do a level two course first because this is definitely a step up. This module is actually called Empire 1492 to 1975 and it's pretty self-explanatory what it's about. It's about different empires during that period of time. So of course you're looking at the British Empire, there's also the French Empire, Spanish, the Dutch, there's a chapter on the Chinese Empire, there's a chapter on the Russian Empire, all the different empires that were in this period of history. And the course is split up into six blocks and for each block, for each two blocks, there is a module book. So you get three module books and this has the majority of the texts that you're studying. The first block is what are empires and this is a very introductory block. It's just talking about what the word empire means, what different types of empires are called, this kind of typology. For example you have a plantation colony which is to do with slavery, there are settlement colonies such as Australia where British people went and settled in large numbers and it's very introductory. And then block two is how how do empires begin? Again, this is quite self-explanatory. It's talking about the beginnings of some of these massive empires, especially the Spanish Empire, because the Spanish were kind of some of the first Europeans to go abroad and start colonies. It does talk about the brutalities of what Europeans did to these indigenous populations, especially with Spain, and it looks at the Caribbean and the Americas, so like the Incan Empire, the Aztec tech empire, all that kind of thing. Then the second book is block three and block four. The third block is how do empires work? It's to do with economy, it's to do with culture, the military aspect of empire, and then block four, which I think was my favourite block, is how are empires experienced? This definitely goes into more first-hand accounts. For example, there's slavery, what life was like in a settler colony for the colonised and the colonised. Some harder topics are discussed in this block, especially in the slavery section. It doesn't shy away from the realities of what it was like to be a slave or how awful Europeans were against non-European countries. And then the final book is Block 5 and Block 6. Block 5 is Why Do Empires End? It's all about decolonization. This one talks about American independence. It talks about revolutionary wars in Angola and Algeria. It talks about Austria-Hungary and the First World War. It talks about a lot of different things. And again, I really enjoyed this block. I think it was very interesting. And then the final block is conclusions and legacies and this is quite a short block just talking about the lasting impact of empire, how in some places empire has this continuing impact. For example in Kenya there's been some conflict over land and who the land actually belongs to. Those are the six blocks, three module books. You also get a visual sources book which has maps, and advertising stuff to complement your reading. 
Also, of course, you have the online website that has a lot of sources, visual material, video material, lots of other things. And then in terms of assessment, you have six TMAs, which are tutor module assessments. And these are basically essays. I think the majority of them were 2000 word essays. There were a couple of ones where it was like analyze a source, but generally, 2000 word essays. Then you also have an EMA rather than an exam and an EMA is an end of module assessment and in this case it is an extended 3000 word essay. And then I thought I would go into the positives and negatives. Not really negatives but things to consider if you're considering this module. So we'll start with my positives and for me the best thing about this course was the use of primary sources and the primary source database. This is something that I haven't experienced before on a module and I just think it was fantastic. So there's this online database of primary sources that are related to each of the different blocks, all the things you're looking at. I just think that was a fantastic resource. There was such variety in the sources. There were ones from the point of view of the colonised, so you're looking at indigenous accounts, slave accounts, there's also settlers, there's government documents, there's visual sources such as maps, there's also tons of secondary sources that you are shown. And again, I just think it's brilliant that everything that you could need is in that one place. So if you were interested in sources, I would highly recommend this course. I just think it offers you so much. There was also DVD content as well, and I have had DVD content on other modules but the fact that some of this DVD content was from like near history. There was a whole bit on the British exhibition of 1924 and it had actual like black and white video footage from that and I think it just brings it so to life. I know that reading first-hand accounts and looking at pictures and paintings is really interesting but actually to see people talk about their experiences. I also just loved the vastness of this module. It covers a massive period of time. It looks at a range of different countries and their empires and it might seem a bit overwhelming to be like it is this hundreds and hundreds of year period of time and we're looking at all these different things but I think the way the course is structured really guides you through. I just think it was brilliant and I've learned so much about countries and cultures that I just had no idea about. I mean the Chinese empire I knew nothing about and getting to learn about that and like the Russian empire like how Russia became Russia it's just really really interesting. Also like I said it doesn't have an exam at the end you have an EMA instead and I know some people really hate exams. I hate exams. If you are very apprehensive about exams you got the EMA. Also in the TMA questions themselves there's a lot of opportunity to look into the things that you're interested in. Most of the questions if not all of them had kind of options so option one or option two and that enabled you to focus on the things that you were interested in. For example I think the first question was comparing what was more important in the founding of the Spanish Empire and the British Empire and you could choose to focus on Britain or Spain. I ended up focusing on Spain because I think the whole Aztec, Incan, Mexico, all that kind of thing really interested me. I think you do get a lot of choice in this module which I also think is fantastic. And then if we go into the things to consider, maybe the more negative aspects of the course. I wouldn't call them negative because for me I just think they're part and parcel of a level three history course but I thought I would mention them. These are some things to consider. First of all there is a lot of reading. I think the actual core module text itself like each week the chapters were not that much longer than other courses but the amount of extra reading that you are encouraged to do for example all the primary sources, the secondary sources, that was a step up especially some of the secondary sources. Some of them were 20, 30 plus pages and they took me a couple of hours to get through so I think that's something to be aware of to set aside so much time each week to look at these sources and then also I thought that I should mention that there is graphic content in this course there are some pictures some illustrations first-hand accounts that are pretty brutal that are real especially in the slave chapter there were some first-hand accounts of you, what you can imagine the kind of things that happened to slaves which was really hard to read but I appreciate that they didn't hide that kind of thing. Just be aware 
obviously you can skip those pages but it is hard to read some of the bits of this course so I would just say be aware of that kind of thing. So overall I really really love this module. I would highly recommend it. I was very worried going into this module that it was going to be dull and boring and I wouldn't like it. I think there was some kind of preliminary exercise and there was this source and I was reading it and I was like oh no what have I done? But I ended up absolutely loving it. I think it's one of my favourite modules that I've done. I just think it was brilliant. I learnt so much and my viewpoint about life and my perspective has really changed. If you want a course that's really going to challenge you and make you think and show you the world, I'd really recommend it. But that's it. I hope you've gathered something from this video. If you are interested in doing history modules or doing the Open University, I'd highly recommend it. I think it's absolutely brilliant. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and to everyone out there, stay curious. Bye!